I'm Aaron Hunter with Engine Pro. I'm Chris Straub with Straub Technologies. We're here to talk about camshafts. We're going to go over a couple things. Hopefully this gives you a clear idea of how to select the next camshaft for your engine build. Chris, let's talk about camshafts as far as the advertised or the lift at 50. What are, what are, what are those two different things that we need to be aware of? Well, we'll start with, I refer to the camshaft as the brain of the engine. Yeah, okay. okay. And the brain, what it does, it creates a path that is followed by the lifter push rod and transferred to the rocker arm, which is transferred to the valve and creates a valve path. That's what we're doing. And that valve path created by the camshaft is what allows air and fuel into the motor and compression to be made, power to be made, and then out the exhaust pipe. So it's pretty simple as far as the camshaft goes, uh, but it is a very smart brain. When we talk about advertised duration, uh, the word advertise actually comes back from the early days of the cam wars where you had the west coast cam guys battling the east coast guys and what they did they took the duration number of the camshaft duration meaning how long the valve was held open or, mm -hmm. or the overall path that the lobe had in, in phase in the engine and that was the advertised number that's what was actually written in uh, the catalogs and stuff. Now, the West Coast, and I hope I get this right, uh, it's because it's been a while and we've lost the members that told me this story. The West Coast guys' advertised number was taken, their seat number was 4,000. So at 4,000 seat, they would take the duration of the camshaft. Well, the East Coast guys took the advertised number at 6,000 seat duration. Well, this always meant that the West Coast guys had bigger stuff and we've talked about Aaron you know bigger's better type deal so <laughs> I want to say it was around in the early 60s and I believe it included Mr. Crower, uh, Mr. Urson, uh, Ed Iskadarian and um, Harvey Crane of course and at dinner one night they all talked about it and they said let's reference the camshaft at 50 thousandths tap at height instead of this advertised number Okay. So 50 camshaft duration is basically just a fixed measurement of the duration at 50 thousandths tap it rise. So that's where it came from. Advertised duration is seat, that's the entire lobe. 50 thousandths duration is actually the duration at 50 thousandths tap it height. But that gave a fair um, comparison between the camshafts and, and, and the East Coast and West Coast rivalry then started from there. So really that's it. So duration simply put is the amount of time we hold the valve open and in my world duration is the ability to sustain power at a given RPM range. The higher the demand of the engine and where you're going to run it RPM wise, we need to hold that valve open longer. So you need a larger camshaft, bigger duration for power up here. If the power is at a lower RPM, we don't need to hold the valve open as long so we can have a shorter duration camshaft. So really it just depends on the engine size and the operating range as far as how much duration we need and, and how long we need to hold that valve open. Okay, so holding the valve open, uh, it sounds like that's an event happening. We've got a closed <laughs> event, we've got an open event, Wait. and this thing's trying to follow the path that, that the cam grinder has dictated, he thinks is the right uh, path for it to follow based on all of the given information. Again, going back, starting at, at math. we got to start at math. We know what our, our intended use of the motor is, not peak horsepower, but where we want our horsepower and torque to fall within our usable RPM range. Right. You know, we don't need a street motor that's yes. daily driven that has a peak horsepower out there at 7,500 RPM. No. We're no. never getting there. We're no. never getting there. So, all of this information in this valve event, how do we how do we come come to a decision well, point? I'm going to use a four letter word, and it's math. We're going to have to use math okay. again in, in this deal, and we can calculate <laughs> out based on supply and demand of the engine, which we've talked about, what, what, where we, when we need to open the valve and when we need to close the valve. So on the intake side, what we're trying to do is the air is coming in and we're going to fill that cylinder at a given point, volumetric efficiency, which yep, was yep. what we've talked about. 
And what you want to do is you want to capture as much air and fuel in that cylinder, but you don't want to, and you want to open the valve when you start to get a really nice fill rate, and you want to close that valve when you've diminished the fill rate so that you're not reaping any more, you can't reap any more benefits, so you might as well close the valve. Or pick up reverb. And some people will, you want to, you want to close that valve and, and, and as quick as possible type deal. So on the intake side, when that efficiency as far as filling the cylinder stops, we need to close that valve and then we start the compression stroke and then, we're ta then we get the power stroke coming down. On the exhaust side, okay, you want to time that as far as the opening of the valve when you're, you've got maximum explosion coming and the exhaust pressures are building, building, building because you want to take advantage of that and then you want to open that valve as quick as possible and let that exhaust side blow down. Now people look at the camshaft and, they're, and they look at all the lobes as far as being the same. You got to remember, you've got an intake side. So you've got air coming in that's filling a, a vacancy. You've got exhaust, which under a high pressure. So the exhaust is actually blowing down on the exhaust side. You've got an extreme amount of pressure and then it's out the door. The intake needs a little coaxing. Okay, come on, get in here, get in here type mm -hmm. deal. So the areas of both of these lobes in most cases are going to be different. In fact, for me, probably 99% of the time, uh, they're going to be different okay. as far as the air goes. But as far as the opening and closing events, it's all about maximizing what you've trapped air and fuel in and maximizing the timing as far as the release to get that exhaust out. And the, so the valve events create and then the sum of those valve events is your LSA. Now everybody likes to throw LSA around. Yeah. Well, uh, we're going we're gonna to debunk a little myth on here. Uh, LSA was put in the catalogs years ago because it was a quick and dirty three-digit number that they could put in the catalog. I guarantee you Ed Iskadarian looked at valve events. I guarantee you the late Harvey Crane looked at valve events. That's what was critical. The problem is, Aaron, if you put all the valve events and all this technical information in the catalog back in the 50s, printing was expensive. <laughs> You'd only get four camshafts per page. Yeah, okay? probably. If you just put LSA out there at the end, well, guess what? Now you get ca 10 camshafts on that page, <laughs> yeah. okay? So LSA, what uh, the way I've been taught is it was a marketing tool and it was a quick and dirty number that they could use for advertising marketing type deal. But at the end of the day, it is a sum of numbers. Mm -hmm. Aaron, you and I go to Vegas, you roll two fours, it's an eight. Yep. If I roll a six and a two, it's an eight. Totally different combination of numbers, but we both get the same sum. Sure. So moving the valve events and stuff is, is what's critical. Duration can stay the same, lift can stay the same, but all but changing those valve events and that what affect the LSA. Center lines, as far as that, they uh, they can change, okay, and, and for each intake and exhaust. The LSA is a fixed number. It is a fixed number between intake and exhaust lobe as far as distance. Tight LSA, so let's say that's a 101, 102. Wide LSA, let's say that's 112. That's fixed. If the center line's here, we can move, say this is a 103, we can advance it and go to a 101 but you're also moving that exhaust also right, tight. Right. So for me, when grinding a camshaft, I always have my custom stuff with the lead ground into it. So the advance is always ground in the camshaft. Uh, the late um, 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 John Reed taught me that. He said, Chris, you, if, you're, if you're going to advance it anyway, you might as well just go ahead and advance it in the camshaft. So that's the way I was taught. Mm. So valve events with the LSA and then overlap. You know, yep. the, the phase where the intake valve is still open and the exhaust is starting to open, that's, you can use exhaust and it's very, uh, it's, 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 it's done quite a bit in the diesel world and stuff to the overlap between the two when the two valves and overlap just means that both valves are open at the same time. Mm -hmm. That clean intake charge of that boosted air on that diesel can actually help blow some of that exhaust out and adding that clean air can fool a, government department sometimes that goes by three letters and it helps the OEM skirt that. Uh, but overlap again affecting fuel efficiency and everything else it's a phase of the camshaft. Um, 
I do pay attention to it, but to me, the most important thing is the valve events and, and maximizing that opening and closing uh, on both intake and exhaust. How we're ramping it up, how we're ramping yes. it down, how long we're keeping it open, all of that. Yeah. Uh, it sounds like there's a lot to consider here in a camshaft. Yes, yes. Well, and then, and then you get into lift. I mean, guys, it's funny, I hear all the time, uh, they'll talk about lift and they're like, well, this is a 650 lift camshaft. Uh, am I gonna have uh, P to V issues? Well, I hate to tell them, but at 650 lift, the piston is not at the top in 650 lift. The valve's barely opened, okay? At 650 lift, at max lift, the piston's way down the cylinder. Right. Okay, well, and then we all know that the crank turns twice the speed of the camshaft. So even at its closest point, the valve coming down, the piston run away from, the pistons run away at twice the speed. So even at their closest point, the piston in that next degree of, of rotation is already t twice as far away from the right. valve as it's chasing it down. Right. So it's not really lift that affects piston to valve issues. It's, it's the opening and closing specs and where we're opening these valves. And lift for me is the ability to make power. So duration, the ability to sustain power in an RPM range, lift is the ability to make horsepower uh, and torque in, 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 in a given power range. Well, these excellent insights for us. I think this gives everybody uh, really good information to chew on, to be able to think about, to be able to approach their cam grinder with uh, solid information about their intended build, to be able to get the right camshaft for that so they can deliver the customer's uh, desires. Yes, yes. So, Chris, thanks for joining us. Appreciate your time, Aaron.